I'm back this month with more Alien reviews, starting with Alien 3. We're out of the good Alien movie phase, and now we're on to uh, all the BS. So, Alien 3, let's review. So, Alien 3 takes place sometime after the events of Aliens, in which the ship that Ellen Ripley, Newt, Hicks, and Bishop escape on. A chest bursts and makes it onto this ship, screws everything up for them where they crash land on this planet that is a maximum security prison. Everyone except Ripley is dead. But the chest burster latches itself onto a dog, it creates an alien, and now, and now this prison essentially has an alien outbreak. And Ellen Ripley once again has to come face to face with this alien and defeat it. Now as far as my personal history with this movie, um, like I said, it was back in college when I watched the four original Alien films for the first time. Obviously, I recognized that the first two were great and I enjoyed them very much. And then once I got into this era of Alien films, ugh, that's when the franchise really took a nosedive. Because like I said, the Alien franchise to me is like the trajectory of the Terminator. Those first two were great, then everything else after that was just piss poor. So with this third film, I heard a lot of the stories about how studio interference hurt this movie. It is directed by David Fincher. It was his first major blockbuster studio film and how he had a horrible experience making it to the point where he just disowns this movie. Almost to the point where on the Alien anthology box set, Every film comes with the original cut and a director's cut, but for the original cut of this film, they don't even call it the director's cut. They just call it the assembly cut. That's how much David Fincher detests this film. And I remember when I saw Alien 3 for the first time, I just thought it was boring. And then even I saw it again for a second time after that in prep for Alien Covenant and still thought it just, yeah, this is not good at all. The third time we've watching this, I'll say... I can kind of see where they were going with this, and this film really does have some good ideas, but it's just like, that's all this movie has, is good ideas. And I do admire David Fincher for trying to get back to the dark tone of this film after all the action we got in Aliens. And even with some of the scenes in this film, you can see the earlier shades of David Fincher as a filmmaker in this. And I can look at it and go, okay, David Fincher, I can see you trying to inject your own foot into this. But studio interference. They had many concepts and ideas before they even made this film and in this film had one of the biggest bait and switch marketing for a movie because obviously I was too young when this movie came out but I did hear and even watch the teaser trailer for this movie and it made it seem like there's going to be aliens on earth and the humans there were going to have to fight them but then once you see the actual movie God a lot of people when they saw this movie in the theater like what the fuck is this? But the biggest slap in the face that this movie committed was killing off Hicks and Newt. Bishop, he's an android and he was in pieces, so they could have brought him back together. But for all intents and purposes, let's just say he's dead. Ella Ripley is the only survivor, and it's just a slap in the face to both the characters, the actors, and even the audience. Because we got so attached to this family that got formed in Aliens and to go into this film, and they were just throwing all that away. Like, what the fuck? But in retrospect, I do like the idea of this movie taking place at a maximum security prison in which an alien outbreak happens and you're just confined to a contained area and everybody's trying to come together to take care of this. There are serious conditions within this film, like everybody has a shaved head because as Dr. Clinton said in the movie, there's a lice problem. And this, and this prison takes place on an entirely different planet where there is no women at all and yet this is a prison with psychopaths, Killers, child molesters, people who do the R word. So you got to think you have all these inmates that that they were basically groomed into not thinking about lust, temptation, or women at all. So that when Ella Rebellion, she does come to this planet, everybody is trying their best to, you know, control themselves, contain themselves. And some of them are not able, but some of them were because they're trying their real best to stay true to themselves and think about God as some of these inmates have. They have found God. And I do like what they do with Ellen Ripley in this movie because she lost basically her surrogate family that she formed in the last movie. But at the same time, she does know that a chest burster made it onto the ship. And so now she's trying to figure out who it latched itself onto. And then she will come to find out that it was her and she has a xenomorph growing inside of her and she would later have no choice but to kill herself. But first they have to take care of this alien that has now latched itself onto a dog, which that scene in itself of it bursting out of the chest of the dog, 
that was just agonizing in itself to look at because the older I get, the more I'm more uh, to animal cruelty. Like, no, don't get me wrong. Animal cruelty, I always thought animal cruelty was wrong, but just watching it here, it was just, mm -mm, mm -mm, absolutely not, absolutely not. But to go back to Ellen Ripley again, like, she was great in this role, and I do like where they take the character, but I think she inadvertently doomed this movie. Sigourney Weaver had more of a say of what she wants to happen in this movie because she did get an Oscar nomination for the last movie, and she's been with this franchise from the very beginning. And so a couple of demands she made was that she gets to have sex with a xenomorph, and there be no guns because she's very anti-guns. To which, thankfully, the studio had the good sense to be like, no, we're not going to let you fuck a xenomorph, but sure, we'll get you the no guns rule which was also a horrible decision because considering that this movie does take place on a maximum security prison come on now any prison has a place where they have weapons in case the inmates try to have a prison riot or outbreak so that one scene where she's talking to the warden and they tell her that this is a planet where they don't have no guns and she says this line this is a maximum security prison and you have no weapons of any kind like, I don't think Sigourney Weaver was even acting in that moment. I think that was her realizing how stupid she has made this movie. Some of the other characters you see in this movie is Dr. Clemens, who was the first to tend to Ellen Ripley. And he's trying his best to control himself, but he's trying to adhere to the rules on the planet. Charles S. Dutton plays Dylan, who is one of the main inmates who tries to keep the peace on the planet. He's great here, and he has a good little partnership going with Ellen Ripley. Lance Herrickson does make an appearance as both Bishop, the android, and Bishop, the maker of the Bishop android. But I like the little moment where she tries to turn on the Bishop android after it's been damaged and she's trying to figure out what the hell happened for an alien to come on the ship. And then we get the maker who is actually modeled after Bishop. It was a nice little way to see Lance Herrickson kind of flex his acting chops a little bit. This movie has a mix between practical imagery and CGI imagery. The practical imagery they do for the Xenomorph is impressive. I, again, David Fitcher, he tried to go back to what they accomplished with the original Alien. But at the same time, they failed with the CGI Alien because, woo, even by 1992 standards, the CGI here was just not good. In fact, this movie came out a year before Jurassic Park. And had they waited to see what they would accomplish with this movie, maybe they could have done better with this film. I do like the scene with the explosion. It was thrilling and it had me on the edge of my seat. I do think the POV shots of the alien xenomorph was a little creative, but it got a little overabundant at a point. And I do like the ending where Ellen Ripley, she basically sacrifices herself to kill the alien that is growing inside of her. And then we hear that last message from the original film. I thought it was a fitting ending for Ellen Ripley, though we all know that wouldn't last long. In the end, Alien 3 is a mixed bag. It's clearly not the best of the Alien movies, but you can tell that the studio, they was really trying to make a legit good sequel. And then everything else after that, it was basically like... Let's just throw stuff at them and whatever sticks, sticks. But but everyone would agree, this movie is definitely a product of studio interference. David Fincher detests this film. This movie has a lot of good ideas, but again, it's just good ideas. They don't really expand on them or they don't really ex they don't really expand on them or do much with them. Garnet Weaver still kicks ass as this character in this film, and it could have been a fitting end for this character. It was a huge step down, but the visual effects, this movie will forever be the in the middle oddball within this franchise. A lot to admire about this film, but at the same time, there's a lot to not admire about this film. And that's why I'm going to give Alien 3 the shoulder shrug emoji.